Hi everybody. Um, I have promised that I was going to explain how to create what's called book binding paper. Um, when I was in college, I took a class in how to create a tra traditionally bound, hardbound journal book. And one of the things that they had in that class was book binding paper, except it didn't come in very many colors and they weren't very attractive. And all it really was was paper adhered to fabric. And they used a cotton we um, regular broadcloth cloth weave for that. Well, I think, you know, for my mini albums, I want something that's going to be a little more fabulous than that sometimes. And what's more fabulous than the gorgeous Chicard fabrics that we can find um, over in the specialty fabric section? Um, so I'm going to show you how I created this. But first, I'd like to talk about what you get from it. You get, um, you get a piece of paper and you get the fabric adhered together and it's pretty stiff. See how you can mold it and it'll start to hold its form? That's really nice. Um, but what's more important is when you cut it, it cuts cleanly. You can cut it with a pair of scissors or a die cutter and it cuts very cleanly and it doesn't fray. Notice if I go in here, even with my fingernail and start digging at it, you have to really dig to get fraying. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can hold still. Can you see that? I mean, maybe if you took your Tim Holtz tool and you wanted the distressed look, you could get a little bit of that, but it's not something that's going to fray out over time. Um, and I just cut some things to show you how cleanly it cuts. Look at that. It cuts beautifully. This is a more of a broadcloth um, cotton muslin fabric that I used here. It came out of the quilting section. Um, it has butterflies on it and gold. It's a really beautiful fabric and I just die cut it with my um, Big Shot and look at that. Just really nice. Um, even this, it, it was a flower center, it looks like a little paper washer and it's just clean and nice and it's not gonna fray. It's gonna stay beautiful. So there are those. So what do you need to do this? Well, you need some of this. Flexible fabric glue. Why do you need fabric glue over any other glue? Well, number one, fabric glue will stay flexible when it's dry. It doesn't get stiff. And when we're working with fabric, we don't want something to get stiff. Secondly, it's kind of thick. And the one thing you need to be afraid of when you're using glue with fabric is having the glue seep, seep all the way through the fabric into the lining or into so that it shows on the top of the fabric. Because if it dries like that, it will, um, it will create a stain on the fabric. And then the other thing about fabric glue that's really important is that when it's dry, um, it's water impervious. So that um, the thing about... Uh, fabric is if it gets water on it and the glue starts to disintegrate then you've got a schmucky mess so you can't glimmer mist it if you use regular glue you need to have this glue because when it dries it's designed to even put in your washing machine and it won't um, break down so then once you've created your fabric object if you want to alter it further with inks or glimmer mist or something like that you can do that um, the only thing I haven't done is use the heat gun on it, and that's something I should probably experiment. What would happen if I tried to use UD on it, for example? I bet if you just dipped it like Velma does, it would do just fine, just like um, any other uh, silk flower. But um, I haven't really played with that, so that's definitely something I will do when I get my big jar of UD that I've been eyeing. Um, anyway, this is how you go about it. You also need lightweight paper, uh, paper, the kind that comes, you know, that we've all purchased because it was only $10 at Joanne and there's like 3,000 pieces and it was had like half of the patterns were pretty and the other half were like, eh, I could live without that. This is kind of for me, one of those, eh, I could live without that patterns. And I'm always trying to think of ways to use up this paper because I have a lot of it because, you know. It was cheap and I tend to be cheap so I was tempted. Um, so this is a great way to use it. Okay, So you need this. If you go with the heavier weight, um, really nice um, paper, you're going to end up with something too thick. So um, 
You could also use just like regular printer paper, I would imagine. Anyway, if you want the pattern to show, like you don't hate it so much you can't stand it, then put it like this. But if you hate the hate, hate the pattern, put it like this, and then you'll just have a white bag. Nonetheless, you put this on here, like this. And then you need a good brush, and a foam brush would be best, but I think I don't have a foam brush at the moment. So I'm going to use this paintbrush. Oh, and you need a brayer. Just squirt some. And then I like to work on this mat because you really need to go out to the edge. And your goal here is to thin that glue out a lot. You want it very, very thin. You don't want it seeping up through the weave of the fabric. Um, the thicker fabrics, like the jacquard, actually work better with this technique because they tend to be thick enough that you don't have the opportunity or the danger of the glue seeping up through to the top. You need to work quickly so the glue doesn't dry on you. When you just lay it on there and you start in the center and you smooth out. And always watch to see that you're not getting your hands in that glue. Um, I suppose you could do it on one piece of paper and throw that piece of paper away and then pull out another piece of paper. That would probably be the way to do things, but I never do things in that manner. I just march forward in my own little way. <laughs> and then once you get it down, you're going to roll it with the brayer. And I just think this is a very important step. It really helps that glue adhere to the back of the fabric. And I can see right here, it kind of seeped through. So it's one of those things where you got to really get that glue thin. But once you do, get them adhered together, you pull them up, and you set this aside to dry. And it's really important to let it dry like for a good 24 hours. Um, I, had, I have this fabric, which is also really quite lovely. And um, it's a piece that I bought specifically to put in my kit, my Tim coffee kit that I'm sending to Elena. And um, it's going to be a little tougher. So let's see what we can do with it. It's really beautiful. Let me see. I'm going to go with this piece. And notice it on some of the jacquard fabrics are directional. So you've got um, a pattern on both sides and then you have to choose. So I'm going to choose at least for this piece that it's going to be more red and less gold. So I've got some of my brown paper to put on the back. So my goal here, again, really, really, really thin because that fabric is so thin and I just, I'm just working very, very quickly and trying to push, trying to get the glue off rather than on, so to speak. Focusing on getting that glue off of the paper rather than on the paper, amazingly enough, because the glue is on there. And you're dragging it out to the edge, dragging, 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 just like that. It's really very easy, other than, you know, looking for those thick spots. Okay. Then, lay the fabric on. Did I mention that 12 inches, it generally runs about $10 a yard. And if you go and you buy 12 inches so that it's just wide enough um, to go across your 12 by 12 piece of paper, you will pay about $3.33 for the strip. And you're going to get four of these 12 by 12 sheets out of that strip. Um, which I think is a pretty darn good deal for, um, for cheap embellishments. Um, but then if you're careful and watch for those Joanne, fa you know, the coupons that are, they only allow you to use them on fabric <laughs> and you're like, oh, great, I'm a scrapbooker. Actually, I'm a quilter too, so I don't usually have too much trouble with that. But, um, but usually quilting fabric is fairly inexpensive, so I don't generally use those coupons on quilting fabric unless I'm buying a really big chunk. So this is what I save those coupons for, those fabric coupons, is for this really expensive, fabulous fabric that... You know, oh, this one came out good. There's no glue seeping through anywhere. Let's 
So there you have it. And it's backed with that kind of brown text. It looks like there's a little lump here. You can work it by just pushing on it. It may or may not adhere down. Um, but once it's adhered, you can do just about anything to this and it's not going to get yucky. Isn't that neat? All right then. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks and have a good night.